this uh, Bilico and Vino work done by Madi or Rockets? Not as I'm aware of. Uh, I think Madi, you are probably referring to them doing hybrids and things like that. Yeah, I think it is a construction in Sabah. Um, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. Collecting for their living collection. Wild collecting wild collecting plants for their living Yeah, collecting wild plants for their living ah, uh, I know they have a small big collection there. I think that's for breeding purpose. Uh, my might be slightly off topic, but mm -hmm. uh, what's the state like uh, in terms of um, orchid conservation? Wild well, orchid conservation in Malaysia. We in have a lot of in Malaysia. In, yeah, or in Malaysia in general. In Malaysia in general. Um, we have lots of poaching going on. Well, that that is uh, something that is happening everywhere. So I don't think there's anything special for Peninsula alone. Uh, poaching is, is a global thing. I think everywhere you have to. Of the 900 species, how many would you say are endangered or threatened? We don't have those data to, to support this thing. Because um, we actually, um, we are at, at a very beginning stage in, in frame, uh, working towards the flora of the slow nature, which is to document how many orchids we have exactly. And we actually don't have enough data to um, to form conservation strategies or to even to even um, have the conservation status yet. So we don't have enough data. So the reality is, Bakun could have destroyed hundreds of species of orchids, and we would have never known that it existed in the first place. Yeah. It's tragic. Isn't it? Well, habitat loss is also another big factor. Highlands, when it first opened, you could see orchids all over the trees and along the roadsides. Now it's very difficult to see any but the very, very common ones. Uh, those orchids you've shown, are they wild? I mean, are they wild orchids? Because we hardly really see those orchids then. Yeah, they are all uh, wild. So or orchids are under shut CITES schedule? Yes. But CITES is only for export. Right. So you can, you can sell locally without any costs. As long as the Norang has to be got it out of the jungle for you. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to get permission if you collect from forest areas. Right. But actually, enforcement. Yes. Yes. Except that um, I actually found out from Cameron Highlands, uh, according to the Forestry Department of Cameron Highlands, if an orang asli has got uh, a permanent work, he's got steady income, then he's not allowed to actually collect. Plants for sale. So that's what I understand. Are there any documented cases of uh, of species used as food or medicinal uh, purposes? Yes, for medicinal purposes, yes. And there's quite a lot in China actually. Uh, in fact, in uh, other parts of Southeast Asian countries, such as I think Myanmar, Vietnam, yes, they, they use lots of dendrobium, especially um, for medicinal purposes. And which part of the plant? The stem. Yeah. 
this thing. Yeah. Vanilla is only of course vanilla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> vanilla is vanilla is also important. But the uh, vanilla that we are consuming is a non-native species from Madagascar. Right? Coca Cola is the biggest uh, consumer of uh, vanilla, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called Coke, huh? <laughs> okay, any other questions? So, if not, a uh, big round of applause for what I. <laughs> I think it will be a very interesting talk. Okay, so uh, if you're interested in the, in the book,